The Holly Road Racks Destination E brings a lot of cool features to the table, and today we're going to be taking a look at it on our 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe. To start things off, this thing can carry 70 pounds per bike. This little knob is kind of hidden away right here. All we have to do is loosen this up a little bit, and we're going to pull this out, and then this whole entire, whole entire assembly tilts like that, which is kind of crazy. So I don't see it having any issues with opening up our hatch because the Tahoe does have a pretty big hatch, but you can keep your bikes on there and you don't have to worry about losing your hatch access. And one thing you will have to store in your vehicle is the ramp. So this ramp is going to come with the bike rack, but it's not like the Thule option that has it to where it can store on the rack. So that's something to kind of think about. But once we put this back up and we'll replace that little knob and tighten it down just so it doesn't move anywhere, then we can go ahead and use this ramp to take our bikes off. We just need to loosen up this and it will extend all the way out to 46 inches, which is pretty decent. Our Tahoe doesn't have a lift on it and it doesn't have aftermarket tires, but it is still pretty high up here, but it's at least usable. Sometimes they get so, so steep to where you can't really use them, but with this one, you really can. So to take this thing off of the rack, you always want to start with our little straps here. And notice on all of our straps, we're going to have the little rubber piece that's going to protect our rims. So you don't have to worry about it scratching up your bike. So we're going to have one for the back, but we actually have two for the front, which is something you don't see that often. This is probably one of the only racks that does that but it just gives you that extra sense of peace of mind so you don't have to worry about it falling off just because it does kind of tilt back quite a bit whenever we tilt it away. But looking at our knob here, so this is gonna be a lockable rack. So we just lock this up and this wheel is just gonna be able to spin. But then that same exact rubber that was for our rims is right here for our frame. So if you do have a carbon fiber frame bike, this probably isn't the best for it just because we are putting a lot of tension and squeezing that frame. You don't wanna really cause any cracks or anything. But when it comes to scratches, this thing isn't gonna scratch up anything. Once we loosen this up enough, we can rotate it to get it out of the way. And then you can just back this bike down. Whenever I do this, I always try to just keep my hand on the brake, just to make sure it's not gonna roll too fast on you. So that was pretty neat. It's not too steep on this car. You can still get it up there. So I think that's a really nice addition. There's only a couple of bike racks on our website that have a ramp. And it's nice that this one's not just huge. It does get relatively big, but you can condense it down pretty simply. But the one thing is that we aren't going to be able to store it anywhere. So we'll need to go on the inside of our Tahoe. But let's just take a look at this. When it comes to the width of your tires, we are going to be limited to four and a half inch wide tires. So for some of those narrower fat tire bikes, we are going to be able to get those on here. And then when it comes to the wheelbase, 50 inches is going to be the max. One thing that's nice about these is we do have a fair amount of distance between our two cradles. It's about 11 inches. So if you have one facing the handlebars facing that way and then one facing this way, you're not gonna really run into much contact. And especially with those pedals, that's also something you really don't have to worry about. Our clamps are gonna be able to rotate around. This is gonna be nice for just some of those odd frame bikes. We can rotate it like this, come down like this, and it can also go all the way to the side to grab. So there are a lot of adjustments there, but then whenever we're to the point where we're ready to go, they do give us this little strap just to make sure it's not really gonna move around a whole lot. Just like that. And then down here, we do have some rubber straps. This is going to just make sure that these are not gonna come undone. And what those do, they are on both sides as we loosen these like that. This is gonna allow us to fold it in just like that. And put those back and always take these straps and put them back where you found them just because 
you never know what's going to happen with these. You don't want them to come out and then this thing will be jumping all over the place on the highway. So this is going to be able to tilt up towards the vehicle, but before I do that, I do want to let you know about how much distance you're going to be adding to the back of your Tahoe. Let's just say that we don't have this down because if we are hauling bikes, it will be up. So when you're hauling your bikes, the max length to the back of your vehicle is going to be about 32 inches. And then at that 32 inch mark, since the Tahoe sits pretty tall, it's not really going to run into any ground clearance issues. I don't think about 31 and a half in the middle and about 27 on each side where your wheels are going to sit. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Even if you are off-roading, I don't think you're going to run into any issues there. So now what we need to do is we need to take this pin right here and then it's always best when you kind of just lift up on the rack a little bit and it is connected so you don't have to worry about losing it. I lose things a lot. So whenever they connect the stuff like the pins and such, it's always super nice. We will take the same pin, put it in the same hole. This is just going to keep it upright and then snap that pin into place. Notice how I didn't really have to use any tools for any of that. All I needed was my hands. Same thing with our anti rattle thing right here. So we have a knob and it's not really going to scratch up your hands because sometimes metal edges get a little sharp, but we do have a little rubber cover that goes over top of it. So what happens here is you put in your two inch hitch receiver and it goes all the way up to this little mark here. And then you put in your hitch pin, it does come with a lock. And then once you do that, you start to tighten this down and that's just going to keep it nice and solid on the inside. So there's no rattling. You're not going to hear it and your bikes are not going to feel it either. So that's kind of nice. I do like the fact that we don't have to use any tools to tighten this thing down. A lot of the times you need a ratchet or something for the anti rattle bolt. And sometimes the threads get messed up and sometimes you just forget to have the tool on you with this. You're always going to have these, right? So I think that's kind of easy to use here on our test course. We'll start by going through the solemn. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners and evasive maneuvers. Then we get to the alternating speed bumps. We'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving on an uneven pavement. Then we'll go over the full speed bumps and we can see the up and down action. This will be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or a driveway. This thing does have a lot of bells and whistles. It is allowing you to carry 70 pounds per bike. I think that's kind of the bread and butter with this. There are some other bike racks on our website that have some ramps. So check out those the Yakima on ramp or the Thule easy Volt XT. I think that's kind of in the same ballpark as this. The other ones are a little bit easier to use in my opinion, but at the end of the day, this gets you the most capacity with the ramp. That's pretty much it for a look at the Hollywood racks destination E on our 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe.